to find the composite function g dot f, we're going to circle the f function and place it into the g of x function here. So wherever there's an x, we're going to replace that x with 3 over x. So g dot f of x is equal to 5 over, remove the x, replace it with 3 over x, minus 4. Now this is the composite function, but it's not simplified. We have a complex fraction here, a little fraction inside of a big one. So what we're going to do is look for the least common denominator of those secondary fractions. We only have one, so the LCD is just x. We're going to multiply the primary fraction, or the big one, top and bottom, by x. Now when we multiply by x over x, that's really just multiplying by 1, so we're not altering the fraction or changing it. On top, we have 5x, and on the bottom, you're going to distribute the x through to those two terms down there. So 3 times x divided by x is just going to be 3, and negative 4 times x is negative 4x. So that is the composite function, but we do have to worry about the domain of this. So if we take a look at the domain, we have really two issues. One is where we substituted in f of x. This value here for x cannot be 0. Otherwise, we've substituted something undefined into the g of x function. So x can't be 0. Then we take a look at our final answer here. And that denominator cannot be 0. So we can set 3 minus 4x not equal to 0, solve for x by adding 4x to both sides, and then dividing by 4. So another value that x can't be is 3 fourths. So our domain can be any number with the exception of those two. So to say that in interval notation, we could say you can go from negative infinity to 0, with a parenthesis, meaning we don't include the number 0, or from 0 to 3 fourths, or from 3 fourths out to infinity. Any number in those intervals will work. And if you need to see it on a number line, this is what we're really saying. Um, here's 0, here's 3 fourths. And you can use any number to the left and to the right of those two, you just cannot use those two numbers.